We begin our program with broken hearts in yet another American town, which today became the site of yet another deadly school shooting. A high school in Parkland, Florida, became the scene of chaos and panic just before the end of the school day. The Broward County Sheriff says at least 17 people are dead. 17 people. A suspect is alive in custody. As is our policy on this program, we will not say his name or show you his picture. We'll update you on the investigation, certainly, and as information comes in over the next two hours. But as always, and as happens too often, we'll keep our focus on the victims, their loved ones, and the survivors. High school kids, teachers, parents, brothers and sisters, people whose lives were lost or forever changed this afternoon, people who tonight have joined a terrible and a senseless club, one that grows by the week in this country. Right now, we're going to show you a short video taken inside a classroom during the shooting. Difficult to watch. It is difficult to listen to. We blurred the faces of the students. Holy. Oh, holy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy. Kay joins us now from Parkland, Florida. Uh, Randy, uh, talk to me about the latest that, that we know about what happened. Anderson, I can tell you that for sure it was an afternoon filled with terror for so many. Uh, any other day, this affluent community outside Fort Lauderdale would be considered one of the safest in the state of Florida. But today, as you know, a shooter changed all of that. A sheriff late this evening here told us that the shooting began outside the building and then entered inside the high school building. Uh, that is what we're told, that the shooter actually followed the students inside. And tonight, Anderson, investigators have the gruesome task of going through that high school building and identifying the victims. Around 2.30 p.m., the Broward County Sheriff's Office responds to reports of a shooting with multiple injuries at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. The student population, close to 3,000. At first, those inside the school didn't realize what was happening. Kids were freaking out. Some kids froze. Some kids were on their phones. A lot of were on their phones just trying to Snapchat everything because they thought it was a joke and it wasn't. At this point, the shooter's whereabouts are unknown. SWAT teams go from room to room, securing areas before allowing students and teachers to evacuate. What's it like for you to have this going on at your school? Uh, it's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's, un, it's unnecessary. It's, it's out of, it, it's, there's no words to describe how I feel right now. Like I'm, I was shaking, I was, I was panicking. It was just all out panic about the school. Students run to safety after they are escorted out of the school building, some with hands still in the air, others clutching each other for support. Outside the school, first responders tend to the wounded, and parents anxiously wait to see their children outside of the lockdown zone. Do you know, is your daughter safe? Absolutely, thank God. Just 10 minutes ago, she was able to call me. I hadn't heard from her since 2.48. She kept texting me. Um, and she said that she was hiding, that she was fine, but for me to please call 911 because there was somebody hurt on the third floor in the 1200 building. Um, she, she, was, she was very nervous. She said that she could hear the person who, who was shot, you know, crying out for help and, and, and just was, you know, a nervous wreck. The FBI and ATF joined local law enforcement on site. Police say they know the identity of the suspect and confirm he has left the school grounds. Just before 4 p.m., the Broward County Sheriff's Office announces they found the shooter and arrested him without incident. Randy, I understand you've been speaking to, to families who are there as well. Anderson, as you know all too well, days like these are certainly heartbreaking here on the scene. When I arrived this afternoon, not long after the shooting, there were parents still waiting outside, waiting and wondering if their children had survived. One of the first people I met was a woman who told me that she was still waiting for word of her daughter, at least to see her daughter. She'd gotten a text message from her earlier. She was had locked herself in a closet and had texted her mother saying, I love you, mom. If I don't make it, 
I love you, Mom. So Anderson, that's just you know one of the many feelings from, from families and parents here on this heartbreaking day, just, just a, a snapshot of what they've gone through. We should also point out, Shimon Prokipes reported just a few moments ago, new information, apparently the, the uh, shooter, uh, it, not only who's in custody, is actually uh, talking to investigators. One of the things that they have learned, according to the reporting of Shimon Prokipes, based on sources, is that the shooter arrived at the school uh, with a gas mask and some sort of smoke grenades, and the shooter is actually the one who pulled the fire alarm, supposedly the idea being to get students to come out uh, and uh, have this be as big a uh, mass casualty incident as possible.